Welcome to Growing in Grace, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And now, here's the hosts of Growing in Grace, Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Hello there, I'm Joel Brzezinski, and along with me, my friend Mike Kapler. Growing in Grace, the name of our program, Growing in the Grace and the Knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mike, I'm glad to have you along with me, and we'll talk uh, some more about Ephesians today. It's a blessing to be able to to get together and do this every week, Joel. So, uh, once again, yeah, uh, this is a thrill for me to be able to just talk about the gospel for a few minutes every week. We appreciate those of you being there listening. We've been in Ephesians, uh, walking through uh, each chapter. I think we we kind of finished last week uh, toward the end of chapter 3. Joel, I know you were uh, moving along there and came to verse 19. If we look at the last two verses here, Paul said, Now to him who is able, speaking of God, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Good place to end a chapter, huh? Yeah, to him... To him be the glory. I mean, when you look at this, uh, he, he Paul does a couple of things here. I mean, he I think his purpose overall is to is to really say to him be glory, to God be glory. But he also does teach us something about God in that you know, he shares with us that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So he tells us there is a power at work in us. Uh, the Holy Spirit is at work in us. God's grace is at work in us. It's according to that power that God works in us exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. It's easy to, that is so easy to, uh, at least for me, to feel excited about and feel good about, but sometimes I wonder where in the world is that power right now? You know, sometimes I, it's like I think that I see that power at work kind of in the background, or I see, you know, and a lot of times I think that's where the power is at work, where it's not necessarily something that we can see and feel in the moment. But when we a lot of times take a look back, we understand that God has been at work in us all along. You know, you know, we've been, you and I, Mike, we've been in the Pentecostal church, we've been in um, the evangelical church, and, and, and we see and hear a lot about miracles. Uh, we've heard a lot of this, you know, stuff about miracles, about uh, some miraculous things happening, and it's like we think that God's power at work in us is supposed to mean visual things that we can see and that we can feel. Uh, we kind of sometimes think of God's power like that, but so often, at, at least from my experience, it's been like I said, where I've been walking along and wondering what in the world is going on, and then it's only when I look back, at certain times when I look back, I see, oh, that's what's been going on. So I think that power, the word power there, isn't necessarily always what we think it is. I think you're right about that. And I've always been fascinated with this verse, that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, those two words right there, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. I don't know about you. But my mind wanders a lot, and um, especially when someone's talking to me. <laughs> how, how many times have some has somebody come up to you and inter- introduced themselves, and I've introduced myself to them, and then 20 seconds later I cannot remember, remember their, their name. name. <laughs> and I know it, too. I, it might have even been five seconds later, and I'm kicking myself. I'm, What'd you say? <laughs> oh, I got their name already. What was I thinking about? I don't know. Was I thinking about what I was going to say or how I was going to shake their hand? I, but my mind wanders, and, and, and I've got a pretty big imagination, I think. Uh, I'm probably a, a daydreamer in some ways, and maybe that's good. Maybe sometimes it's not. But God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think. And if he's able to do something above and beyond what I think, then I, I know that uh, I, I could tap into something pretty huge here if, if I could uh, just get a hold of it. But, Joel, you, you're right. I've, I've got a background where I grew up as a child in, in a Catholic church. I got saved as a child. Somebody led me to the Lord. I didn't go to church for quite a while because I didn't really feel like I had anywhere I wanted to go at that point. And so as I became a young adult, I got into an evangelical denomination. 
went into a charismatic type of Pentecostal church for a while, and now I'm involved in sort of a non-denominational church, which falls in between all of them. And the, the thing I've noticed as I look back upon all of that, a big part of my life in Christ hasn't really been church-connected, even though I've gone to church much of my life. There were years where I didn't go as a young person, and and so I, I, I sort of was able to, to get to know God in a way where I, I wasn't surrounded by all the religion. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I look back on that now, and I don't want somebody to misunderstand me because I, I believe that it's good for you to be in church, okay? I just think as a young person, in the situation I was in and with the people I was surrounded by, I began to know God in a way that uh, perhaps was good for me not to be around the religious stuff <laughs> so I could grow in him a little bit. And as I as I as I began to to understand and grow in my personal relationship with God, and then came back into the church, I began to see some things where sometimes the people that you would least expect to have some some knowledge and understanding of of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, sometimes the church circles. I'm talking about all the different denominations out there. Sometimes where you least think that God's going to be is where I saw him revealed the most in, in people that maybe didn't have all the great Bible teaching where they were at, but there was there was this fruit that was just um, revealed from their spirit, and they were just... And then sometimes the people who got the most Bible teaching uh, seemed less Christ-like <laughs> in, in, in their in, in their actions and, and how they acted toward others. I'm, I'm just fascinated by that. But to get back to this verse... God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. That should uh, be a verse that you should mark down for those times where you get really discouraged and you wonder where, where God is at in your situation. Well, um, yeah, uh, just a second. Were, were you saying something? <laughs> what? What's your name? <laughs> oh. Are you saying I'm long-winded? <laughs> no, dude, that's not what I'm saying. I just couldn't remember your name. That's all. No. Oh, I get it. <laughs> See, I'm, I, I was thinking about something else when he said that. I, I didn't even hear you. But anyway, you no, long-winded by no means. You made some really good points in there. And that exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Man, that's I, I'm just thinking about you know putting that on my wall right now. You're just typing it out and printing it out. I've got various things on my wall, just things that I like to look at. The various verses or sayings, and that's one I think I'm going to do, be, just just to remind myself, renew my renew my mind in that uh, often that God can do so much more, and and in fact, it's it's not just that He can do, but He is doing it. He's He's working in our lives. He's 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 taking everything and working it all together for the good of those who love Him and who are called according to His purpose. He's doing that right now as we speak. I mean, whether we can see it or not, he is right now doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. The thing is, why don't we just ask? I mean, let's do that. Let's ask. Let's think about these things. Let's ask him to do these things. You know, one thing that's always stuck with me is, you know, God can say no if he wants. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask. Uh you don't want to, of course, just start getting greedy and make this shopping list and say, God, I want this. God, I want that. God, do this. God, do that. You want to remain humble, as Paul goes on to talk about in, in uh, the beginning of chapter 4. You want to keep yourself humble before him, but be bold in, in asking him to do these things, to do some wonderful things. To, you know, when Jesus said, the things that I do, those who believe in me, they'll do the same things and even greater things. Don't be afraid to ask God uh, to sh- to show you these things or to do these things in you and through you. And Paul kind of does keep it humble here in, in the beginning of uh, Ephesians 4. He says, I, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling to which you were called with all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. That's one thing we can count on is that, see, it's not just about me. It's not just about my surroundings. It's about a body who has been made one, the body of Christ. It's, we're, we're all one in, in the spirit. One family. And to bounce back on something you just said, Joel, 
I, nobody has to tell me as a parent to do good things for my kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just a natural reaction. My love for them, I want to do good things. I want to give them stuff. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to try to spoil them to death because I don't want that to happen either. But it's it's nice every once in a while to have the child come and ask me for something. Now, I may not always give it to them, but most of the time they're going to not ask me for something that they can't have. They know that. But it's just nice every once in a while to have the kid come up to me and say, Dad, could could you do this for me or could I have that? And to be able to do that after they've asked is also a very good feeling. Now, they don't always have to ask to get something good, but every now and then it's just nice to be able to have them do that. I don't know what it is about it. And then to be able to give it to them, that's a good feeling as a parent. Yeah, and there's times, like you say, when, when they haven't even asked. And there's been times when we've been, it is such a, an awesome thing to do this for your kids, but they're not expecting it at all. I, I'm trying to think of something we did. I think it was going to an amusement park. The kids had no clue. They didn't know that we were going to do this. And maybe five minutes before we got there, they think we're going to go do something else, and they find out where we're going. And just to see them excited, because we were working behind the scenes. We were doing, you know, to to, to put this in a different way, and kind of like what you're talking about, for relating the parent-child thing to the father and Christian thing, God being our father, we were doing exceedingly abundantly above what they were even asking or thinking at the time. And just think, like you're saying, if that's such a thrill for us, how awesome God is, how awesome, how awesome it is for God to do these things for his children. And the things that he does for us far more exceeds what we could ever do for our children. Next week, Joel, I'll share a story if you remind me about uh one of my kids, she was asking for something for years, and it came to her by surprise when she least expected it. And I wonder sometimes if, if there's a, a parallel there sometimes when we're looking or hoping for something from God, um, and it comes in an unusual package or at a, at a time where we least expect it. So uh, give me a chance to share that next week. Yeah, that would be fun to hear about that. And uh, as we wrap up here, I mean, one thing that we can be sure of, one thing that we're told about, um, that God is doing for us that hasn't been fulfilled yet is that he is preparing a place for us. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if he's going to go prepare this place for us, it's because he's going to bring us there. I mean, he's. I think that as much as we like to worship God and praise God for all that he is, and as much as we want to lift up his name, he and his thoughts toward us are probably so much greater than what we can imagine. He loves us so much. His feelings for us are so deep. The love that he has is something we can't even comprehend. I think that God is so much looking forward to the return of Christ than we are. Well, a few verses ago, we read it uh, toward the uh, end of chapter 3. God's love surpasses knowledge. You're never going to be able to get somebody to intellectually understand this this love that you're trying to communicate to them. It's going to have to be revealed to their heart by the Spirit of God, just like what Paul is talking about, the mystery being revealed. And uh, you just can't explain this intellectually, but they can. But every, every person on the face of the earth can get this uh, to where they can uh, receive it, believe it, and experience it. You've been listening to Growing in Grace with Mike Kepler and Joel Barizaki, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ.